Hey everyone, welcome back to the Epic Games YouTube channel. My name is Ralph. This is Pathfinder Rod of the Righteous. In the previous episode, we found the sword that our mongrel friends were looking for. Apparently, it was the sword of an angel called Lariel, and he tried to fight uh, the demon lord Discari. He, he was uh, just as bad as successful as Tarendalef was in the first episode. Uh, in any case, we have some kind of link into this weapon. We are able to summon it, I think. We are heading towards the uh, the chief of the mongrels now, as we get uh, notified by the tutorial that sometimes interacting with an object requires a skill check. So let me show you that real quickly. As you can see, we need a mobility check to get across the rubble here. Uh, before we do that, though, I'm going to loot some more stuff. Uh, we have Camellia in the party. We have uh, Wenduok. I do you want me? think she is called Wenduok, yes. And Lan in our party. A Zen archer and a fighter. And Camellia is a spirit hunter. So, with our whole party selected, let's try and do this mobility check. Forget it. That was failed. Thanks, Lan. You're so awesome, Lan. <laughs> yeah, Lan, you're awesome, Lan. Most of the game's mechanics are based on the rules of the tabletop RPG Pathfinder, which uses dice for determining outcomes of the various actions. Yes. If you want to read everything here, just... Uh, Click that pause button. Whoa, whoa, okay. Every event is documented in the combat log. There you can see the results of your roles, your characters and enemies make, skill checks and lots of other things. If you're unhappy with the way a combat goes, check out the detail of the roles. You might find some information that would help you optimize your tactics. All right, my tactic now is to have our Zen archer shoot and hopefully it hits. Okay, that summoned another spider. But Save the last one for me. we uh, were able to kill that one. That is good. Uh, let's see... Koldar, let's move to the side here. And do we have enough? We cannot reach it? Or what is the issue here? Sila, you can move in and attack. Oh, well, move in because you cannot reach, apparently. Camellia. You can also not attack this monster. Why is that, I wonder? When do I... You can... Shoot. So how about you move in here? No match for me. So only... Lon can shoot this thing. Me. We oh no, now we can. Okay, there we go. That was a bit confusing. Let's see, we still have uh, Anivia nearby. Is there something we can loot down here? Not really. There was some loot up ahead. Mushrooms, alright. What is this? Okay, something to brew potions or scribe scrolls. And caustic mold. Yeah, let's grab that. That is another mobility check. There is a skeleton here. Let's just grab all of that. Your blood. <laughs> There's another giant fly. 
Uh, let Gamelia just wait. I'll rip you apart! Strike with all your might! Wonderwag is, uh... It's really getting into it. Let's see, what else is there? Oh, there it's, it's over there, alright. Let's put Sila up in front here. To, uh, to catch the centipede. And then Camellia, can you reach it? Let's hit it with your rapier. Damn, nice. There is another one. We can do it. All right. We are uh, doing pretty good. Every attack during a combat entails the following calculations. First, the attacker makes an attack roll and compares the result to the target's armor class to see if the attack was a hit or a miss. If the attack hits, the attackers make a damage roll to see how much damage it deals. Not quite sure how familiar you are with uh, like the base mechanics of an uh, RPG, but... Um, both for D and D and Pathfinder, it works this way. There is more loot, which we'll grab. Is that a a way in somewhere? No. Let us be off. I'm going to keep messing up I these. <laughs> This uh, rotation mechanic here. Okay, um, that one popped up out of nowhere. So, is there a reason why I cannot shoot this thing now? I can only move. Is that a surprise round? No. no match for she me. can shoot, so. Endure this. Uh, Sila, let's just keep her back here. Camellia as well, let it come to us. Forward. And kill it with our archers. Make every strike count. Still not dead. Okay. Now it is. We found some more loot. What is this? A masterwork greatsword. Okay, that's a two-hander, I assume. Yep. And a comma. Are we getting close to uh, the location? Oh, what's going on here? Wendua glances at Lan, who is fixing his uh, slip bowstring and quickly walks over to you. Her cat-like eyes glow from beneath her hood. Listen here, you. I don't know who you are or where you come from, but you and I are the only two people here who see things clearly. That's why I'm asking you, don't show the light of heaven to Sol. Lan is sure that the light should be shown to the mongrels. Lan. Wendua grimaces and a guttural husky snarl unfurls in her throat. He wants to play the hero. His first idea, if you remember, was to grab the sword and run, he and run headlong into the maze. Does that sound like a plan to you? To me it sounds like suicide. The worst part is that the tribe might actually take his words to heart and follow where he leads. Don't you want to save the kids lost in the maze? I do want to, but I'm not going to risk the future of the tribe for the sake of a few stupid kids. Chief Sol is hesitant, and for good reason. 
He also understands how dangerous this is for the tribe. Lan's the only one who benefits from these childish games of heroism. I'll go alone if I have to and find them, or whatever's left of them, without any heroics relying only on myself, risking only my own life. You and your friends, you can come with me. Perhaps we can make it to the end of the maze together and find a way out to the surface. I thought you considered the mongrels to be great warriors. The descendants of great warriors. I believe that my people are worthy of greatness, that we are strong and can do many things. That's why we were chased down here, we scared people. But it's one thing to go hunting in the caves and another to fight in the shield maze. I've been there, spent my whole life training so I can make it through all the way to the end. There were more of us trekkers at the start, we were young and stupid. What's a couple of monsters when there's a whole world out there waiting for us? It's what we thought. We weren't prepared. The maze isn't just a physical challenge, it's cunning and full of traps. It's dark as the primordial night, and if you close your eyes and listen, you hear whispers right behind you and soft singing in the distance that seems to rise and fall with the beating of your heart. When do I cloaks away? I had to learn from my friend's mistakes. I had to step over their bodies and go further. I don't want to have to do that again. And it will happen again if a crowd of ill-prepared fighters burst into the maze with no idea where they're going. All because Lan believes that a glowing sword will solve all our problems. Well, I'll think about it. Don't show the chief the light and I'll lead you through the maze to the surface, I swear it. Okay, here it um, starts already, the conflicts. It's gonna be a tough choice we have to make. Uh, leaving a location, uh, we do that by clicking on an icon and the whole party needs to be near it to do that. So, um, to Neatholm, let's go. Is that water? Oh, yes, it is. Okay, we cannot walk into it. Nope. Okay, here's a bunch of mongrels. Has the maze really collapsed? Lan and Wenduak are always dragging back trash from the caves. No offense. <laughs> uh, that's a good one. Oh, we can walk in there. It's a bit... There we go, Chief Sol. Your first impression of the mongrel village is of a squalid dump with the odors to match. Unblinking, glowing eyes watch you from the gloom and deformed shadows slope between the huts. You see some mongrels gutting white eyeless fish while others are repairing fishing nets. All the signs of a normal village life, but tense expectation hangs in the air. A heavy-set aged mongrel slowly shuffles his way towards you. The hair on his head grows in limp, wispy strands and his face has a distinctly rat-like appearance with pronounced teeth. And you hear a rattling sound in his chest with every breath he takes. One of his eyes is white fully scarred by cataracts, while the other gleams with moisture. Uplanders, eh? End times are upon us, indeed. Chief Sol, we found the angel's sword, and we found the one who can wield it. He had a vision, and now the angel's sword, together with the light of heaven, are somehow inside him. Gather the tribe, anyone who can hold a weapon. The young ones are still alive, we can go save them. Ah, Lan, always dreaming, always talking. You're too hashty, too hashty for your own good. It's going to get you in trouble. Sol eyes you up and down, an uplander with the light of heaven. That's too good for us. Our kind don't have good things happen. There is always a catch. Lan trusts people because he likes to believe 
Isn't that right, Lan? I'm the chief, I don't work on fate. Show the light. Dialogue options restricted by mythic paths. Oh, okay. Throughout the game, you will occasionally encounter colored options marked as associated with a specific mythic path. These are dialogue branches that embody the spirit of a particular manifestation of mythic powers. In the earlier stages of the game, these options must be selected in order to gain the opportunity to set out on the corresponding mythic path. Once your mythic path is set, unique alternatives, inaccessible to other mythic paths, will become available to you. Okay, so we are going to need to reveal this. Lan speaks the truth. Wendawag is not going to be happy about this one. The heavenly flame flares to life as at your unspoken commands, bright, pure, dancing with multicolored sparks like a sunbeam passing through stained glass. The mongrels abandon their tasks and stare, transfixed. The light is bright but not blinding. It's warm, but its warmth is soul deep. I performed a lawful action. All right, uh, I owe Medea. <laughs> I'm gonna keep saying it like that. Uh, she's pleased. Sol is silent for a, for a while. Tears are streaming down his white, pale face, but the old man doesn't even care to wipe them away. So it's true. The angel did not forsake us. No, he came. Back from the dead he came to save our children. Lan gives you a nod of thanks. The scaled half of his face is indifferent, but the human half is visibly relieved, as if he wasn't sure all this time that you would support him. Wenduak hisses at you like an angry cat. See these fishermen and these hunters, these husks of men and women? Their blood will be on your hands. We have the blessing of the angels. We will survive and help the young tribesmen. Idiot. You see a bright light and now you think even the maze is no match for you? You always think the worst, Wendu. You're not on your own in this anymore. We've got allies, well, a couple at least, but one good fighter's worth ten bad ones. You have the right of it, Lan, but we're netters. We're going to wait. I sent a messenger to summon all the tribes. It will take time, yes, but they will all come. They will come for the light. Wait, Lan, wait, Uplanders. Rest a while in one of our huts. Our home is your home. Jesus. Alright, Chief, understood. Let's hope that a few hours isn't the difference between life and death for those kids. If they ask me what took us so long, I'll tell them it was your decision. Wenduag only grits her teeth in silence. I hope she's not gonna stab us in the back now. Level advancement! Look at that, we already uh, leveled up. Combat victories and other achievements give your character experience points. After accumulating a certain amount of experience, a character gains a new level. It allows them to take a new class or raise their level in one of the classes they already possess. And also gives other advantages, such as increased hit points. Always handy, increased hit points. Let's uh, see if we can uh, loot the place. How about that? That's what we always do. Let's grab those um, one-eyed fish that... <laughs> that are uh, all over the place. Let's move. It's not much going on here so far. Which uh, tent are we supposed to rest in actually? I guess that doesn't really matter, does it? You cannot rest here, okay. Uh, what did the journal say? Rest in the hut. Oh, there is actually more loot, it seems.
Finally, someone from the surface. I was beginning to lose hope. An elderly man in expensive but not ostentatious clothes approaches you. His face is peppered with several healed cuts and bruises and twisted in an expression of extreme discontent. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Horgus Gworm. Yes, that Gworm. You no doubt have heard of me. But uh, if you spent any time at all in the city, I have a business proposition for you. Well, your name tells me nothing. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> you truly are freshly arrived in the city then. You couldn't have picked up a worse time, that's for certain. Only just arrived and the city's been raised to rubble. You should know that you are looking at one of the richest and most distinguished men in Canabras. Well, that <laughs> look how much good that did you. I may not be as well known as uh, certain swaggering loudmouths who spend their lives traipsing from one ball to the next, but the Gworm Trading Company is one of the pillars of the city, I'll have you know. Did you see the marquees in the square? I paid for those. Tried any of the festival delicacies? You have Horgus Gworm to thank for that. Well, I did have a drink, I think. Yeah, that was pretty good. So how did you end up here? For a moment, Horgus's eyes focus on Camellia before his gaze returned to you. Ooh. Like everyone else, down I went when that accursed beetle cleaved the ground in twain between her feet. I'm lucky I didn't break my neck in the fall, and I'm doubly lucky that I didn't encounter any subterranean cockroaches on my blind wanderings and instead came across hunters from the settlement. Although I must say that when I first glimpsed their physiognomies, my life flashed before my very eyes, but they turned out to be decent chaps. Frightening to look at, but able to keep a bargain. You don't speak very kindly of the mongrels, sir, even though they saved your life. Ha! Kind words are for people with hours to fritter away on pleasantries. Horgus Gworm speaks his mind, and he pays for services rendered, not with kind words, but with hard coin. I gave the mongrels my dagger in exchange for their help. Its handle is worth more than their whole village. Okay, what uh, what kind of business are we talking about here? I don't know what is happening on the surface right now, but I'm determined to find out. You have no intention of seeing out the rest of your days in this village, I suspect? We must find a route back to the surface, to the city. If there's anything left of it. Yeah, you probably want to see uh, if your marquees are still intact, huh? You look promising, like someone who can turn a demon into minced meat before they have time to sneeze. I could use a companion like you. You are strong. It will be no trouble to you, but I, alas, am not as fit as I once was. I can't go crawling about through caves, playing at scouts. My proposition is simple, lead me back to the city and I shall pay you a thousand gold coins. Uh, yeah, that, um, that sounds good. I suggest we help this man. It's good to have friends among the Canabras elite. Um, diplomacy. I could ask for 2000 gold. I mean, I have the skill after all. <laughs> or I could do a good action. <laughs> Horgus's gaze is piercing. Are you taking advantage of my dire circumstances? Very well, make it 2000. All right. You've got yourself a deal. Splendid! In the meantime, I shall sit here in the village. Go on, go on, don't forget our agreement. When you find the way out, be sure to tell me. 2000 gold. ka -ching. Thank you, uh, Caldor, for this um, financial windfall. Loot. Thank you. Eight more gold. Here is the fish. Mutated fish. Yes, thank you. Follow me. More fish. More fish. 
<laughs> Poor mongrels. Let's see, we have uh, a Nevia here, maybe we can talk to her. This tragedy may not have happened if you'd spent less time surveilling honest citizens and more time tracking the real spies and demon worshippers. Brilliant idea, how come I didn't think of it? Now, if only the cultists would tell us they were cultists, then we wouldn't have to waste time investigating honest citizens who decide to go all cloak and dagger right under our noses. What's uh, the bad blood between you about? It's an old matter. Mrs. Uh, Tirabadi here had the notion of spying on me, then of rummaging through my goods. I ask you, do I look like a cultist? <laughs> cultists don't tend to look like cultists, you know. That's kind of the whole problem. And you, Mr. Gworm, built a whole secret operation of buying and smuggling into the city. What was it? Uh, oh yeah, magical weapons. How was I supposed to know that all that uh, rigmarole with middlemen was so you could anonymously donate supplies to the crusade? Don't you see? I have a reputation to uphold, one that I value most highly. Horogus Gworm is a hard-nosed businessman, not a good fairy from a tale. Yes, I care about my city, yes. I wish to see that its defenders, my defenders, were well-fed, healthy and well-armed. But to make those donations openly was unthinkable. I might as well hang a sign outside my door welcoming in every sponge or leech and parasite in the city. I appreciate your help to the Crusades. No jokes, you're an alright bloke, but carrying on secret dealings in the city that's teeming with cultists is a huge pain in the backside for us, um, whose job it is to keep an eye on that sort of thing. Anivia, how's the leg? The girl scrunches up her nose. Well, it hasn't fallen off yet, that's good. They've bandaged me up all nice and smeared some stinking stuff on the wound, so it looks like I'm gonna live. That's set, wait a day and I'll be right as rain, so I'm waiting. What do you think is happening in the city now? Perhaps the city is no more if Daskari himself appeared. There's no telling how bad things are. Can you hold off on writing your uh, obituaries just yet? The city's full of fighters. Besides that, it's barely a stone throw from Nerosian. I think our people will hold on long enough for reinforcements to come from the Queen. This ain't Descari's home turf. He's gonna have to retreat or else fight off the whole Mandavian army. So Nerosian is the capital of the Crusader state of Mendef. Uh, it's designed first and foremost as a defensive fortification to hold back the endless demonic hordes of the world wounds. Nerosian is also a holy city of Iomedai. Many of its notable residents are devout worshippers of Iomedai, including Queen Galfrey, the ruler of Mendev. The cruciform cathedral to Iomedai is central to both Nerosian's physical structures and its defense of the city. The cathedral also draws faithful pilgrims from afar to worship at this renowned holy site. Cool, I would love to uh, go there. I hope that's possible at some point. I would love to uh, worship in uh, the Cruciform Cathedral. What do you think of the mongrels? I thought they were just a story, the sort of thing drunks in the taverns would come out with. Now I discovered that it's true. Well, what can I possibly think of them? The poor creatures are most unfortunate with their faces and their minds so deformed, it's a miracle they're even alive. The part that boggles my mind is that they're the descendants of the First Crusaders. All these years they've been living beneath our feet in caves in the dirt. If I'd known the legends about them were true, I'd have dedicated my life to getting them out of this place. To what end? The people of Canabras would have stoned them on sight, and Prelet Holren would have had them tossed into the pyre en masse. Whatever the yells of this place, it's their home. How long do you think they would have survived on the surface? Uh, so the prelate, we saw him uh, in the first episode. Canabras' famed prelate, Holron Shapok, first gained the trust and admiration of the city's people by organizing inquisitions against suspected demon worshippers and witches. Holron and his force of elite witch hunters exposed dozens of cultists and spies and it is said executed many more under suspicion, but with no real proof. Ah yes, good old inquisition. These events started the Third Crusade, widely accepted as the least effective and most self-destructive of the Four Crusades, 
Still, Holren evoked respect and admiration in the populace, as well as fear, and agreed to guide the city as its prelate. What are you gonna do when you get back to the surface? Well, I'm going to go home, lest I knew I owned a very fine mansion, I shall see if it's still standing, or if I am now homeless. I'm sure you can find a tent here. Uh, I'm going to find Arabet. She's my wife and the leader of the Eagle Watch. As long as she lives, she won't allow Canabras to fall. Go on then, don't dilly dally. The sooner we get out of here, the likelier we are to find some people still alive up there. Take care of yourself. Alrighty. More loot. Ah, we have a vendor. Vendors allow you to buy weapons, armor, spell scrolls, potions and other things. Daira can buy the trophies you've brought from the caves and sell something you might need in the adventure that awaits you. For example, potions of cure light wounds. What does that mean? Potions of cure light wounds. As if we need that, come on. <laughs> As if we need healing. What a silly idea. Okay, here is the tent that we can sleep in, at least. Uh, let's uh, check out Daira here for a moment. You there! A tall woman with a face deformed by an enormous smelling... Uh, not smelling, swelling, smiles broadly at you, showing off her double row of small, sharp teeth. You, from the surface, you must be tough to make it all the way here. Never thought I'd see the day. Call me Daira. Let's trade. Who are you? People around here call me all sorts. Daira the Hoarder, Daira the Coin, Daira the City Girl. Like, that's a bad thing. I, I troll the, the caves, picking up all kinds of things from the surface that wash down here through the sewers. I trade all kinds of junk for food and clothes. I only part with the best finds for coins. Got no coins? Forget what money is? Well, then I have no use for you. If you want city goods, you need to pay for them with gold, like city folk. Why are you so eager to trade with me? Because all the people here are no better than animals now. Daira yells with surprising anger before being overcome with coughing. Wiping her mouth, she continues, Our forefathers lived in the city, like you. Our people love to reminisce about armies, knights, crusades. I couldn't care less about that. Savages with clubs can fight a war. Only civilized folk can buy and sell. They've all forgotten what trading is. They've forgotten the value of gold. They barter hides for plant roots and go on about the feats of the crusaders. Who cares about them? I don't need help remembering. I have coins. And I have things to sell. Now let's trade like proper city folk. Alright, we did some, uh, some dealings here. Let's uh, take a quick look. Found some more loot down here. <laughs> what is this? An eye? Bloodshot eye. Great. So we can brew potions as well now. Um, not just um, cook food. March on. I'm assuming this is uh, the way out somehow. Okay, let's uh, head back to that uh, tent that we had back here, where we can uh, sleep. The messenger returned. The tribes are gathering at the entrance to the maze. Our people have already gone there. I've warned Anivia that the old guy won't even acknowledge me. Uh, take your time, there's no rush. The most important people always show up late. Everything's going to plan, but one thing's bothering me. When the has gone. All the tribes? So a whole army is marching on the maze? By mongrel standards, yes. Don't be too disappointed when you see the reality. There aren't many of us who can hold a weapon, or fewer still who can do any damage at all. What do you think happened to Wendowag? I don't know. She was always stubborn. Maybe she decided she should do it all on her own. 
I hope she comes back. We'll struggle without her and she'll struggle without us, no matter how hard she tried to deny it. Uh, what about Anivia and Horgus? Are we just going to leave them here? Once we've cleared the maze, the way ahead will be safe. Anivia has no state to fight and that Horgus guy doesn't look like he'll shift an inch unless we roll out a red carpet all the way to the exit. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like... Uh, that sounds about right. Still, are you sure the maze is the only way to the surface? Uh, there was another passage, the one I used with my dad when we left and then came back. The chief back then, he found it and filled it in to stop anybody else uh, going against the ancestors' wishes. And what the ancestors wanted was for everyone to go through the maze. I'm not sure of anything right now, but we don't have a choice. We can only go forward. There were other passages, but they're far from here. And with all these earthquakes, who knows what condition they're in now. So our best bet is the maze. If it doesn't lead anywhere, then we can consider our next move. Alright, let's, uh, let's go then. Let's go, but before we do, thank you. I was so happy I forgot to thank you before, but you've done something no one else has in a long time. You've given the mongrels hope. It's like we're starting to believe that we're worth something. Now that we have the power of the angels on our side. It won't change anything, of course, but at least you'll help us save the young ones, hopefully. Let's go through the main gate. The straight road is the shortest. Most enemies try to attack your most vulnerable party members. You can always use the optimal formation instead of adjusting your party's formation manually. This is the first formation in the list that will align your party automatically, putting the strongest members in the front row. Alright. I think this is an okay formation. Maybe we can put uh, the two archers next to each other, but other than that, it should be no problem. The spirits demand your blood. Let's um, try and whack this monitor lizard. Let's move on over here. You've crossed the wrong mongrel. <laughs> Well, we're missing again. We won't falter. Yep. Nice. Well, well done, uh, party. Have we hit it at all? Yeah, we did one damage. You are today's sacrifice. Another two damage. You won't survive me. Great. Uh, Sila. Into the fray. Another miss. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, what do we have here? Light of the Angels. All creatures within a 20 foot burst centers on the caster. You summon a soothing light, warming the hearts of your allies and obscuring the vision of your enemies. Every ally in a 20 foot radius gets one temporary hit point for one hour and uh, the enemies become dazzled for 1d4 rounds. Oh, okay. Let's uh, use that. So this is how it feels. Oh, yikes. We, um, we have someone going down here. That's not good. Uh, Lon, you really need to start hitting this uh, creature. Uh, same goes for you, Sila. Oh, you actually have Smite Evil. How about you do that? There we go. The light take you. And I still miss. <laughs> uh, Strike with all your might. Yep. We are doing so well. Make every strike count. Ah, that was a good one, finally. 
the inheritor guide my blade my goodness yeah of course uh, i still need to level up everyone but let's move over here we can do it this will leave a bruise yikes it will indeed you've crossed the wrong mongrel uh, we are going to need to uh, heal celia here the Rinke Potion, can we still hit? Yes, finally. Damn. How many times can you miss? Well? Uh, well. Drink a potion. There's mongrels here. Onwards. That indeed is not much of an army. The tribes are gathering. Soon, soon we will attack. How long can we wait? The other tribes haven't turned up yet. We're going to have to wait for them just a little while longer. Knowing so, the preparations will take the best part of the day. Let's go take a look in the maze ourselves and see what's what. That sounds like a very good idea, but we are gonna tackle the maze in the next episode. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.